Okay, today we'll be talking about uh, limiting reagents. And um, I would like to start this off by examining what I call the sandwich problem. And you're probably thinking, what the heck do sandwiches have to do with limiting reagents? Well, I'll explain. So, your basic sandwich, right, is made up of, you know, two slices of bread, right, and some lunch meat. Okay? So, this is your sandwich. Okay. Now, if I said we have 10 slices of bread, you would say, okay, this would make what? Five sandwiches, right? Okay. And if I said, I start you off with, say, um, three slices of meat. That gives me what? Three sandwiches. Right? Right. Okay. So, now, what if I said I give you eight slices of bread and two slices of meat. Obviously that means if you look at this you would say well I have even though I have eight slices of bread and I have two slices of meat I can only make what two sand which is so in this example I'll say my meat is my limiting reagent. Essentially, in a limiting reagent problem, you're given two amounts of um, our reactants, and we're expected to find one of the products. Sometimes they might even ask you to find which of your reactants is in excess. So let's go in and do a real life problem, which I'll put on the screen, and then we'll dive into the problem. Okay, in the problem I just put up, we have ammonia reacting with carbon dioxide to form urea and water. Okay, sorry my water is off the screen there, but these are the main things we're concerned with. Okay, and in the problem, they mentioned that we have 637.2 grams of ammonia and 142 grams, 1142 grams of carbon dioxide. Okay, so the first two questions ask which of these is the limiting reagent and um, to find the mass of the urea formed. Okay. So there are two methods. Well, let me start by saying, uh, so if you look at, if you go back to that sandwich problem, right, there was a certain um, ratio that you expected your sandwiches to have. Like for every sandwich, you would have two slices of bread and one slice of lunch meat. Same thing with reactions, and that's why an equation is important, right? This equation tells me that my ammonia to carbon dioxide to urea to water ratio is 2 to 1 to 1 to 1. Meaning, you know, every um, mole of urea, uh, sorry, every mole of ammonia gives me, uh, two moles of ammonia gives me one mole of urea, one mole of carbon dioxide gives me one mole of urea. And this ratio is what we'll be looking at in doing these limiting reagent problems. So there are two ways which I usually explain to people to um, do this problem. And 
I'm not going to tell you which one to choose. It depends on your preference. I will show you both methods. In the first method, what I would do is take my amount of ammonia and find my amount of urea and do the same thing for the carbon dioxide and use that to find my amount of urea. Okay, And based on those two numbers, that would help me decide not only what the limiting reagent is, but it would also help me decide how much urea I'm going to form. So let's start with ammonia. If I'm given 637.2 grams of ammonia, first thing I'm going to do is find the moles of ammonia because that would help me uh, based on what I said earlier, the ratio is 2 to 1 to 1 to 1. So if I know my moles of ammonia, I'll be able to directly find my moles of urea. So if you have the mass, uh, to find the moles of ammonia, you would need the molar mass, which is uh, 17.03 grams of NH3 per one mole of NH3. Okay, so when I do the math here, it would help me find the moles of NH3. And then, once I have the moles of NH3, I use my ratio between ammonia and urea to find the moles of urea. And finally, I'll use my molar mass of urea to find the grams of urea. So if I do all the math here, I will end up getting 1,124 grams of urea. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing for CO2. So 1,142 grams of carbon uh, dioxide, again using the molar mass of carbon dioxide, which is 44.01 grams per mole of carbon dioxide. And then the ratio between urea and carbon dioxide, which is 1 mole carbon dioxide to 1 mole of urea. And then finally, the molar mass of urea. I'm using a little shorthand here because I'm kind of running out of room. But uh, if you follow the video, you, you get the gist. So if I do the math here, I get 1559 grams. So if I look at my two numbers, I have 1124 grams of urea and 1559 grams of urea. Now, the lower number is the one that tells me what my limiting reagent is. This is less than this, so therefore, no, therefore, this is my, these are my grams of my product that are formed, but also tells me that this ammonia is my limiting reagent. So the advantage of this method is that it tells me my limiting reagent, but also tells me how much product I form right away. Okay, the, the disadvantage here is now you, you're going through uh, two different methods, and there's another disadvantage which I'll point out to you later on. But that's yeah, that's that's uh, the first method, which is is directly straightforward. All I did was take both of my uh, masses of ammonia and carbon dioxide and use them to find the grams of urea. So based on that, my ammonia is my limiting reagent. Okay, so now let's go into the second method. In this method, I will take my two reagents and use them to find, um, I'll, I'll basically find out how many moles of my two reagents I have. So um, again, we have 637.2 grams of ammonia. Okay, 
I want to convert those to moles, which is um, by using again the uh, molar mass 17.03 grams of NH3 to 1 mole of NH3, which gives me 25.95 moles NH3. And then I will find my moles of CO2 as well. So 1142 grams of CO2 times 44.01 grams of CO2 to 1 mole of CO2. And this, if I do the math here, will give me 37.42 moles of CO2. Okay, so now that I have both moles, okay, this is what I, I'll put out the top here, this is what I have. Okay, what I can now do here is find out how much of one of these uh, reactants the other would need, need. So, let me take my NH3. I have 25.95 moles of NH3, and I'm going to find how many moles of CO2 I would need for that. So if I go back to my ratio, the ratio of ammonia to CO2 is 2 to 1. So I will have 2 moles of NH3 to 1 mole of CO2. And that tells me I'm going to need 12.97 moles of CO2. So if you look at this, I have 37.42 moles of CO2 and I'm going to need, let me say need, I need 12.97 moles of CO2. These moles are greater than what I have, therefore my CO2 is excess. If we did this the other way around, and you know you picked CO2 and said, okay, how much um, ammonia will I need? This tells me I need 37.41 37 moles of NH3. But this is less than the ammonia that I have. This, sorry, this is greater than the amount of ammonia that I have. So therefore, this tells me my ammonia is limiting. So you didn't have to do, I'm, ju I'm just trying to show you that you, don't, you could pick any one of these and use it to find the other. And based on that, you will see that it will directly tell you if your, if your amount that you have, uh, sorry, if your amount that you need is less than what you have, then obviously that reactant will be in excess. If my amount that I need is more than what I have, that tells you that that reactant is limited. So once you find which of your um, bowls are limiting or excess, uh, you can now take that and go back and find your product again. So um, if we took this problem one step further, I would then take, because I know that my ammonia is limiting now, I would take my amount of ammonia, which is 25 point nine five moles of ammonia and using my ratio of ammonia to urea I again find out that I have one two four grams so of urea so, that essentially is how you do a limiting reagent problem.